Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com. Today we're going to be going over the lowly attack. It's been one of my most requested videos. It's very similar to the fried liver attack, which many people enjoy uh, playing, but it actually plays a little bit better. It scores a little bit better. Um, as far as competition wise, white has a phenomenal win rate. So I thought it would be a good idea to go over it. Um, it's not covered too much on the internet, so I, I thought it would be a good idea to actually put something out there to, to show you guys some. Um, some things to think about and some different ideas as far as variations in the lowly attack. So it starts out with pawn 2e4, pawn e5, knight f3, simple development, again trying to control the center of the board with his minor pieces. Knight 2c6, again simple development move from black, trying to control the center of the board with the same thing. Uh, transforming into the Italian game with bishop 2c4, trying to eye down on this f7 square, a huge weakness for black early on into the game. And from there, black's going to continue with the two knights defense with knight 2 f6. And then white's going to play knight 2 f5 here. Now black's going to block this by playing pawn to d5. And then after white takes on d5 and black recaptures on d5, you may be familiar with the fried liver attack, which right away plays knight 2 takes on f7, sacrificing, and after the king comes to f7, then white tries to chase the king around playing queen take queen to f3 check. But the lowly attack actually uh, tries to get the rook involved into the game, and so it goes ahead and sacrifices a pawn here. It plays pawn to d4, and the variation that we're going to be looking at is after black takes on d4. Now black does have some different options. He does not have to take right away here on d4, uh, but a lot of the same concepts that we're going to be going over in the four main variations after he does take uh, will pretty much be the same. So I do want to kind of go over uh, the four variations from here, um, and that is first, after white castles on the king side, again really looking forward uh, to get this rook involved into the game. So eventually wants to bring the rook to e1. Um, a really a strong attack that the fried liver attack doesn't always um, get to. So uh, keep that in mind. The four variations that we are going to be going over for black because you may see a lot of different variations. Again, there's a lot of attacking going on, a um, lot of tactical variations in this, but I do want to go over the four main lines that you may see. The first one is bishop to b4. Again, simple development move, trying to get the dark square bishop involved into the game. We'll talk about the pros and cons of all of these. Uh, second, you may see bishop to e7. Again, trying to block the uh, rook coming to e1 with tempo, checking the king there on e8. Uh, also, you may see bishop to e6, very important, trying to hold down on this f7 square. Huge weakness for black early on. And then the last one that you may see is pawn to f6, trying to attack this this knight here on g5. So those are the four variations that we're going to be going over today. Now if you're kind of watching this video and you're like, Kevin, this is too crazy off the wall. Uh, no one at top level play would ever play this. It, it actually has been played um, you know, quite a few number of times. And, and what's surprising is white pretty much has a phenomenal win rate. So um, if you're looking for something, as you'll see a lot of times, we're going to be sacrificing this knight here on f7. If you're like, ah, you know, sacrificing pieces early on isn't that great. Um, even, you know, engines actually score this really well. Even after, you know, big sacrifices, a lot of these variations, we actually sacrifice a knight here on c3. Um, so even with all these you know, crazy sacrifices, it's still good because of all the attacking that white has in his options. So uh, just keep that in mind while we're going along. This is not some crazy um, opening that actually doesn't score well. It's actually fundamentally sound even though we're giving up uh, material. But it really focuses on what is chess and that is it's not always about how many pieces you have or what material you have. Um, it's about attacking your opponent's king. If you have a strong attack on your opponent's king, uh, you know, a lot of times that is more than any means more than anything else. So uh, we'll go ahead and jump into it. First variation again we're going to talk about is bishop to b4, and then white from here is just going to kick that away. It's kind of an annoying move, but you know, every now and then you may see it. And white's just going to play pawn to a3, and then the bishop's going to come back to e7. Now he could always come back to um, a5, uh, but then white can just play pawn to b4. Um, again, attacking it again, 
and really this bishop needs to be into the action. He needs to come back to e7, um, or he's going to be kind of left out in the cold while this king just gets, uh, you know, attacked over and over again. So he actually needs to come back to e7. And this will go into the second variation we'll get into, but the bishop's going to be coming back to e7. And then the knight's going to come to f7. So very similar in the fried liver attack. Uh, white is going to be sacrificing a knight here on f7. Um, and then after the king takes on f7, then the queen comes to f3. But as you can tell, slight difference in the fried liver attack. Um, in the lowly attack, we have castled on the the king side, white has, um, and very easy to get this rook involved into the game if he ever needs to come to e1. So just keep that in mind, um, a, a slight difference in the, in the two openings. Now black has two main options from here. One is just to bring his bishop to f6, again blocking this queen here from attacking. And the other one is to bring his king down to e6, defending this knight here on d5. First one we're going to go over is bishop to f6. Probably the better of the two moves, even though right away the white bishop can take here on d5. Attacking the king here. Uh, from here you might see black come to e6, and after the bishops trade off right here, then the rook's going to come to e1. Again, a very important um, concept in the lowly attack is bringing this rook to e1. Again, the white king is very, very safe. It's going to be very hard for black to ever have a attack against the white king. Um, and if you look at the board, white has a strong attack against the king. Same as the fried liver attack as the lowly attack is both times white's going to be chasing the black king around the board. It's going to be very easy to develop pieces into the game for white, at the same time usually gaining a tempo, attacking the king, and also um, in the middle of the board. Anytime your opponent's king is in the middle of the board, it's going to be a very, very good game for you. So just keep that in mind. That is one variation. Um, also, instead of the bishop coming to f6, the king can also come to e6. So I do feel like this is the, the worst of the two moves. Uh, from here, white's just going to play rook to e1. Again, lowly attack. This is kind of what we're aiming for. Eyeing down on this e file. This is, again, why white gave up this pawn um, on d4 to get rid of the black pawn that was here on e5 to open up this e file for our rook that would later come to e1 right here. So uh, from here, the knight can come to e5. And then white is going to play bishop to f4. Um, again, pinning down this knight here on e5. It can't move. Uh, keep in mind this knight here on d5 cannot move also. So uh, white is pretty much developing all his pieces towards the center of the board. He's controlling this e file. And none of these knights can move for black. So uh, black's king is in the middle of the board. He doesn't have any of his major pieces developed. And it's going to be really hard for him to move because pretty much all his pieces are, are locked down right now. Now black could try to play bishop to f6. Again, trying to defend this knight here on e5. Um, again, this is how we talked about before. The bishop is actually... Uh, you know, actually helping if it was here on e7, whereas if it was over here on a5 and the pawn was here on b4, it was kind of blocking it off and the bishop wasn't doing anything. So definitely helpful if the bishop is over here on e7. Um, but right here, trying to defend uh, this knight here on e5. But now white has a phenomenal move. He can actually just play knight to c3. And this is kind of what we talked about before, and that's sacrificing this knight here on c3. Typically, it doesn't have a, a strong presence in the lowly attack. Um, a lot of times, it just opens up this D file. It's kind of what we're going for. And so after the pawn takes on c3, then white can go ahead and jump ahead and take with his rook here on e5. Now, after the bishop takes, uh, white can now bring his rook over to e1. And he's going to have a very, very strong attack right here. Now, if you look at it, you're like, well, you know, black is actually up in material. This is true, but if you look at it, uh, this rook here on h8 isn't moving. He's not doing anything. Uh, the rook here on a8 is not doing anything. Uh, the queen here on d8 has not moved yet. He's not really involved into the action. This bishop here on c8, it's going to be very hard for him to get into the action. Um, this knight here on d5 can't move. This bishop here on, 
on e5 can't move, um, and the king is in the middle of the board. So uh, if you were to run this through an engine, white has an overwhelming dominance on this game. He's pretty much controlling the center of the board, and he has so many different attacks that he can run against black. It's going to be very hard uh, for black to actually last much longer in the game. So um, very, very powerful attack again, sacrificing not only a knight here on f7, but also sacrificing another knight here on c3, which um, kind of a common theme that you'll see in the lowly attack. Now the next variation we're going to go over just briefly, and that is because it was bishop to e7. Um, again, this is very, very similar to the last one. Uh, the only difference in being that, you know, if he comes to b4 first, then the pawn comes to a3, which I actually feel like is a bonus. Um, later on, the knight may want to come to b4 as an outpost, so... Um, Pretty much the same thing is going to happen before if the bishop comes to e7 first. Again, white's going to continue with the same moves. He's going to first come, excuse me, he's going to come to knight to f7, sacrifice after the king comes to knight to f7 and recapture the knight. Uh, then the queen's going to come and continue the same thing. So just keep that in mind, bishop to b4 and then back to e7, or if he just comes to e7 right away, it's going to be very very similar move so uh, if we come back here instead of bishop to e7 you may also see bishop to e6 seems like a logical move if you look at it again so many times uh, white actually wants to come to f7 right away and sacrifice um, and then the king is forced to you know take well he's not forced but um, you know he obviously wants to take here on f7 gaining material um, if he doesn't, his king's just going to be in the middle of the board, and obviously uh, white has the rook here coming to e1. So um, after the king takes on f7, then you know the attack is very, very strong for white. So a lot of times from black, you will see this bishop come to e6 first, which uh, personally I feel like is the best move for black. I really don't recommend getting into the lowly attack at all just because white has such a strong attack. But if you ever do find yourself here um, and you do have to choose between one of the variations, I feel like bishop to e6 probably is the easiest to play. Um, from here, white's going to play rook to e1. Um, again, pinning down uh, this bishop here to the king here. So, so now the knight can easily come to f7 and take uh, because the bishop can no longer recapture on f7, which is kind of what white is going for. Uh, the queen can now come to d7, again attacking um, and defending this pawn here on f7, uh, but white can pretty much just disregard that and he can continue in playing knight to takes on f7. Now if the queen takes, we already talked about the bishop can't take, but uh, if the queen takes on f7, then you know the bishop could still come and take here on d4. Again, this bishop is pinned down uh, to the king. He can't do anything right here. So again, very, very strong attack. A lot of times you will not see the queen take, uh, but instead you will see, obviously because that's the same in material, um, but again a lot of times you may see the king come to f7 and take, and now the queen is going to come to f3 as we talked about before, and now if the king comes back to g8, uh, now the rook is actually going to come and capture that bishop here on e6, and this is a very important um, part in, in the variation to look at. Black really needs to allow this to go. If he tries to, to push further and, and actually take this rook here on e6, uh, then white can come in and capture with his queen on d5. Uh, black cannot recapture with his queen. If he does, it's going to be checkmate right away, um, as you can see from there. Um, the best move that pretty much he has um, is he can play, he can try, you know, pawn to h6 if he wants to. Um, and then after the queen takes, the king goes to h7. Uh, the bishop comes down to d3 check, and then after g6, it's going to be checkmate and all over. So um, if we look at this, black really should not take here on e6 because he's either going to lose his queen um, or he's going to lose the game. So just keep that in mind. So rook coming to e6, very, very um, important part of this and again it's going to be very very hard for black. Keep in mind as we're going through all these variations there's no really good variation for black. I know I said I, I kind of prefer this one but um, pretty much all four of these variations scores so much better for white. White is um, has so much more opportunity to attack 
tactical lines are all in the favor for white. White's king is just kind of hanging out here on g1. Again, it's going to be so hard for black to attack. And white, very similar to the fried liver attack, is just chasing the black king all around the board. Um, so very, very strong. Again, if you, if you can not get into the lowly attack as black, I highly recommend it because it's very, very frustrating um, and difficult to find your way out of um, you know the bombardment that that white has attacking your king over and over again so uh, the last variation that we're going to be going over is actually not moving one of the bishops at all uh, but it's actually going to be bringing the pawn to f6 so very logical move attacking this knight here on um, excuse me on g5 and, and no longer allowing you know the knight to come here on f7 and then the queen to come to f3 attacking the king right away uh, because there is now this pawn here on f6 now after pawn to f6 from black uh, white now has another opportunity to sacrifice a knight here on c3 so a fantastic move again white in the lowly attack really does not use uh, this knight here that starts on b1 so any time that he can sacrifice this and open up this D file, it's actually a very good opportunity for White. Kind of opens up the lines for his other pieces, um, really opens up the door for a very strong attack. So after the pawn takes on C3, the bishop for White's going to take here on D5, and Black's going to gobble up another knight here. White's lost both of his knights. Uh, but now white's going to bring his rook over to e1 and attack the king here on e8. Uh, now black could easily come to e7, again defending the king here on e8. Uh, and then white can play bishop takes on g5. Again, you know, developing his pieces with tempo. So he's got his bishop involved into the game. All of white's pieces are involved into the game. Uh, minus this rook here on a1, which he will later on. This rook on h8 is not doing anything. This rook on a8 is not doing anything. This light square bishop is not doing a whole heck of a lot. Um, and this black king on e8 is still um, kind of out in the open. He hasn't castled yet, so he's not safe yet. So white has a very, very strong attack uh, right here. Also, as you can tell, this bishop is now pinned down, and we are attacking the pinned down piece. Anytime you have a, a piece that's pinned down, it, it's a good idea to attack that piece. So um, from here, you may see black has a last-ditch last, last ditch effort. He may try to take here on b2, um, attacking the rook here. Um, and white can pretty much just continue with his plan. He can take here on c6, attacking the king here. Um, Black's going to double up his pawns. He needs to take here on c6. And then white can take with his queen on d8. And after the king takes on d8, again, the king can no longer castle for black. Uh, white can come in, capture with his bishop on e7. Um, again, with all those sacrificings that white did with both of his knights, um, as you can see, as far as material standpoint, uh, black is up one pawn, which white's going to get that back uh, very very soon um, it would actually be a mistake if the king came to d7 after the rook came over to d1 uh, this would be very very bad for black uh, but a lot of times you may see the king come back to e8 um, and then the bishop you know he can just come back to a3 if he wanted to a discovered attack with his rook here on e1 and he's also attacking this pawn here on b2 so he's going to get that material back also, the, the king here is still out in the middle. Um, he's out in the open, easy for attacks. Um, so you know that the king could come to f7, um, and the rook could come to e7 if you wanted to, again attacking this uh, king here on f7, and also this pawn here on c7. So a lot of different attacks uh, that white has, while black still has a lot that he needs to do to get his pieces developed into the game. Uh, again, neither of his rooks have moved. His bishop still is not moved, so white has a distinct advantage as far as going into the end game. So uh, just keep this in mind. These are the four main variations. Again, bishop to b4, bishop to e7, bishop to e6, trying to hold on to that f7 pawn, and then lastly, just pawn to f6 moving forward. These are a lot of the ideas that you'll see um, in the lowly attack after, um, if we come back here, um, after white takes 
and then the knight takes, and then the pawn comes forward to d4, and black captures here on d4. So um, if I get a lot of positive feedback ab about the lowly attack, people are using it and enjoying it. Um, again, I think it's a fantastic opening for white, a lot of different fantastic opening attacking ideas that white has, especially after he castles on the king side and gets his rook involved into the game. Uh, again, very similar to the fried liver attack. If I get a lot of feedback, if you guys want another video or two over different variations, again, you know, black doesn't have to take with his pawn here on d4. Um, he could always get his bishop involved into the game. He could always take with his knight here on d4. So he definitely has some options. Uh, feel free to give me feedback if you guys want to see that um, or any other videos that you want to see. Hopefully you enjoy the lowly attack. Feel free to give it a try. Uh, let me know how it goes. I think it's a fantastic opening, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, be sure and check out the website, thechesswebsite.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.